Hey everybody, welcome back to Motion UX. Today we're gonna to jump into a UI morph animation. We're first gonna do the whole thing in Figma just to see the limitations and the possibilities within that tool. And then we'll dive into After Effects and see how we can really create a high fidelity animation in that tool and then bring that back into Figma to really make our prototypes feel more realistic. Let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna be animating this little micro interaction. As the user taps on this play button, it's going to morph into this pause button. And when you tap on the pause button, it will morph back into the play button. Let's see how we might do that in Figma, right? So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is set up a prototype interaction. So if we select our first A frame and we just drag it over here to B frame, we can say on click, navigate to B, but we want the animation to be a smart animate. And we will go ahead and leave the easing as it is and the duration as it is default. And if we actually go ahead and play this prototype, you will see that smart animate doesn't do anything except for fade in between screen A and screen B. The way that smart animate works is it looks at the first screen and it says, what is the same on the second screen based off of the layer names and the layer contents and those sorts of things. And let's transition between state A and state B with the things that are the same. Because there's nothing similar between state A and state B here, it just does a fade because that's all it knows to do. But if we were to bring this play button in here and say we moved it to the right a little bit and we went ahead and we restarted this animation, you can see that it actually moves the play button to the right because it's smart animating from state A to state B and it sees that this play button is the same layer, it has the same name and so on. And you can actually see when I hover over this, it slightly highlights the other play button on the other screen. And that tells you that Smart Animate will be animating that layer specifically between the two frames. So let's go ahead and do a morph animation between state A and state B. And the method that we're gonna be using is a match cut transition. What we want to happen is for when we tap on this, it to spin around and immediately swap to this pause button and then the pause button will then finish spinning all the way around here. We go ahead and we say we want to click on this. It will smart animate to the next stage, which all it's doing is spinning. And we want that to spin as fast as it can, starting from very slow and going very, very, very fast. And let's go ahead and preview that. So we have this nice spinning that speeds up very much at the end. And when it gets to here, what we want to happen is not a click, but we want it to be a delay. And so we want as quick as it possibly can, which is one millisecond, we want it to change to B and we want it to be an instant animation. As soon as it reaches its highest speed, it will just change to state B, which shows the pause button. And then from the pause button, we want it to animate to this, which is continuing the spin with a smart animate where it starts off super, super fast. And then it slows down to its final rest. We want it to be a delay, which we want it to be instantaneous. We click on the first screen and it's smart animate starting slow all the way to fast goes to the second screen, which basically spins the play button. After a one millisecond delay, it switches to this screen. And after a one millisecond delay, it then spins to the final pause button position. So let's see what that looks like. So this is working pretty well. It's not a true morph animation because we're using a match cut technique. It tricks the eye into making it seem like it is a fluid animation. And how the match cut works is as the object is spinning at its maximum velocity, we are swapping it for the next object, which is continuing that velocity and direction, and then finally easing out to its resting position. And because that switch is happening at the fastest moment, it tricks our eye into thinking that it's more of a seamless transition than it actually is. And so we also wanna be able to interact with this button to go back from pause to play. And the way to do that is we'll actually have to duplicate these two here because we can't have multiple delay interactions on a single screen. So we'll go ahead and delete the interactions that are on here. And we will take this and we'll say, if we click this, it will go to this screen, starting off slow and getting very, very fast. And then from this screen to this screen, it will do a after delay, which will be one millisecond. We should have this to be instant. After a delay from here, it will be a one millisecond delay with a smart animate that starts off super fast and ends super slow. So here's how we can understand this. If we're gonna go from play to pause, it will go from play, spin, switch to pause, and end on pause. And if we're going to pause to play, it will start on pause, it will spin, switch to play, and then end on play. 
So now we have this awesome little play pause morph animation in Figma and it's looking pretty great. So let's take this same animation that we have and actually make it into an interactive component. Go ahead and duplicate all that we have going on there and we'll go ahead and we'll make sure that all of these are in frames. Now we have all of these in equal size frames. Let's go ahead and create a component set. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the exact same prototype interactions that we did up here, but to these specific components here. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. So let's go ahead and create a frame here. We will show what our variant might look like. And so now we have created a interactive component that has our match cut animation built into it. And so you can notice that we are only on one single screen here when we look back at our prototype. And so all of these interactions are contained within each one of these components. And so if we had multiple instances of this on different pages, now we're able to use this component as we want to without complicating our prototypes any further. Now we're gonna jump into After Effects and see how we can make this morph transition feel a little bit more natural. So we've imported our designs using AEUX and let's go ahead and start animating this match cut morph transition. And we're really wanting to replicate exactly what we've done in Figma, but maybe alter things to make it feel a little bit more natural. We can see that we already have a null object here and this, this object essentially just controls these two layers that are parented to this object. And so when I rotate this one object, it rotates everything else that is parented to it. And so what's nice about that is we can then also parent this play button to it and we can do the rotation for all of them at the same time. And so we'll go ahead and we'll put down a rotation keyframe, go forward 30 frames, put down another one. And we wanna say that we're gonna rotate this 180 degrees. If we go ahead and play it, we can see that a rotation is happening. We wanna mimic the easing that we had, but we're doing it all under one rotate, one fluid rotation. And so we're gonna do an ease in and an ease out. And we'll make these curves a little bit more aggressive. And if we open up the graph editor of this rotation, we can see that right here in the middle is the steepest point. And so this is where we wanna swap the play for the pause. And so we can simply do that by selecting the holding Alt, right bracket, going forward one frame and selecting the other ones and doing left bracket. And now we have exactly what we had in the Figma file. And we're able to do this with just two keyframes. So let's go ahead and see how we can make this feel a little bit more natural. And so one way that I see immediately is maybe we have the play button morph in a little bit and then maybe the pause button start out together and maybe they move out from the cut all the way to the end. Go ahead and open up the position property for the pause. And we can go ahead and separate the dimensions and we're only interested in using the X position. So if we go ahead and lay down two keyframes here, go back to the middle and we can move these two in. So now when it changes, we can see that there's a little bit of follow through with the motion as that match cut happens. And we will go ahead and do an enter easing because this is the fastest it's going to be and we want the easing of the motion to match everything else that's going on. So it feels like one P of motion. And then for the play button, we can alter the actual Bezier path of the shape. Right now we have this polystar path and what we need to do is actually get access to the path points and so we can convert it to a Bezier path. And now if we click on this, we can actually alter the shape layer directly. And so we're gonna lay down a keyframe here, go to the beginning, lay down another keyframe. And what we want to do is just very subtly change it to move in just like this. And so it starts to mimic a little bit more closely that shape that we have from the pause button. And let's also apply some exit easing to that to match what is happening uh, with our rotation easing up top. So let's go ahead and play that. And so what we have now is something that feels more true to a morph animation. We're still using the match cut technique, but this little bit of anticipation from the triangle changing into this rectangle and the rectangles spacing apart make it feel a lot more fluid than what we had before. So now we wanna take this, make it into a GIF and bring it back into Figma. So let's go ahead, we have this in the forward motion. So if we're gonna tap in the play, it will turn into the pause. Drag that into a new composition. We are going to apply a time remap with Alt Command T. And this essentially gives us control of the timing of this layer. So if we just swap the first keyframe with the last keyframe, we can actually reverse the timing of it. 
Now we have play forward and pause reverse. So if we select both of those compositions, let's go ahead and make GIF. And so now that we have our GIFs ready to go, let's drop them into Figma over here. We imported them at 2x, so let's go ahead and divide this by 2 and we have them being the same size that we have here. To use these GIFs in an actual prototype setting, let's go ahead and duplicate what we have going on here already. And we will swap these in where we need them. So what we want to happen is essentially when we click this, we want it to play the GIF and then pause here on the pause button. And when we click the pause button, we want it to play this GIF and then pause here on the start button. And so let's just go ahead and swap these components out. So if we just go ahead and we delete what is there, we pop these in and let's set up our prototype. So if we select this, we just want it to be a instant and then after a delay of 500 milliseconds, because that's how long our animation is. We click this, we want it to be an instant and then on delay of 500 milliseconds, we want it to go here. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Well, three, we click it, plays our GIF. We click it, it plays our GIF. And you can see we have a little bit more of a fluid animation back and forth between this play and pause. The limitations of using GIFs is that we can't get this type of interactive component happening. So this is an interaction that we wanna have in multiple places in our prototype. We can't really use a GIF in an interactive prototype like this. The issue with this is that the GIF only plays once. And so if you're staying on the same screen for all of these interactions, the GIF will only play once. So the next time you go and click through it, you will only see the end state of every single GIF. And so you actually need to restart the prototype every time you wanna see that interaction again. You don't have that issue when you're doing this because each new page is kind of like a restart for the GIF. And so going from here to here, it restarts the GIF and it plays once from beginning to the end and it goes into the next one. And that is it, everybody. We just learned how to do a simple UI morph animation using Figma interactive components and smart animate. And then using After Effects to get the animation feeling a little bit more fluid than what we can achieve in Figma. Figma versus After Effects, it really depends on your specific use case, but hopefully both of these things help get your prototypes feeling a little bit more realistic. Catch you guys next time.